It was November 1915 when Albert Einstein first put forward the idea that heavy objects could wrap the fabric of space and time. In the hundred odd years since then, the theory of general relativity has been proved correct again and in, again in increasingly precise and spectacular ways. And it's happening again today as astronomers publish details of a remarkable pair of stars which are dragging space-time around them as they spin. The findings appear in the journal Science and ABC Science editor Jonathan Webb has been taking a look at that. Good morning to you, Jonathan. Good morning, Hamish. Uh, where are these stars and what do we need to know about them? Well, they're not close. They're about 10,000 light years away, which uh, is actually well, it's only about a tenth of the way across our galaxy, the Milky Way, but uh, it takes a pretty good telescope to pick them out. And the key thing to know here is that they are not very big, but they are very heavy. One of them is a white dwarf. So it's an old star getting towards the end of its life. And it is about the size of the Earth, but the mass of the sun crammed into that space. Uh, and the other one is even smaller and denser. So it's a neutron star, which is an exploded kind of dead star. It's about the size of a city. Uh, so, you know, it would fit inside Sydney Harbour or Port Phillip Bay. And it's even heavier. So it's got the mass of about one and a half suns packed into that tiny space. And the other thing to know about these two small heavy stars is they are dancing. They're spinning around each other. They only take about five hours to do that. And that's what the scientists were looking at was the, the rate of the spins of each of the stars on their own and, and how they spin around each other and trying to put that together with the effects of gravity and this idea of Einstein's that gravity is a, a warp in space-time and a prediction that comes from that, which suggests that if big heavy things like that are spinning and then uh, they will actually drag kind of sheer space-time around them as they spin. And it's these big, heavy systems that really put those ideas to the test. And they were tracked by Australia's very own Parkes Radio Telescope for a 20-year period. What did the astronomers see when it comes to the, the way the stars move? Well, what they were able to, to pick up using big dishes like the Parkes Telescope was the flicker from the smaller of those two stars. So that tiny, heavy neutron star is actually what's known as a pulsar. So it has a beam of light coming out on either side and it spins. It spins in th three nearly three times a second. And so it's that flickering of radio light that the telescope, if it's pointing in the right direction, uh, is able to pick up. And so they can get quite a precise fix on how fast it's spinning. And that's what they saw start to, to wobble. There was a shift in the way it was spinning over a 20-year period. They started making these observations back in 2000. Uh, and it's that change in the spin and in the speed that really supports this idea of frame dragging, which was another prediction that grew out of Einstein's theory of general relativity, as you said, about 100 years ago, but is difficult to measure. It has been measured down here on Earth. We're a big, heavy object, and we do those sorts of things as well, but much more subtly. It's only been measured at tiny increments using satellites, so it's big sort of gravitational labs out there in the galaxy that allow these things to be really put to the test. This effect is about 100 million times stronger than you would, would get in terms of this frame dragging on the surface of the Earth. Uh, now, another study published today describes a new weapon in the fight against bee colony collapse. Uh, this is something I know a lot of us are worried about, the disappearance of the bees. Uh, it's a very small weapon and an engineered bacteria. That's right, a small and very promising weapon, actually. This is also published in the journal Science Today. And the commentary in the same issue of the journal actually uses the words silver bullet. So it's early days for this, um, this new weapon, as you say, but it, it does show quite a lot of potential. So basically, the, the scientists have identified a bacteria that lives in the bellies of bees all around the world uh, in the European honeybee, which is the one we mostly use uh, in our beehives to make honey. And a bit like the bacteria we have in our gut, it coexists there very happily. The, the bees get on fine and it's just a part of their gut flora, but it only is present in the guts of honeybees. So they thought this was a good target and they did some genetic engineering. And what they put in place was a gene that basically gives them an extra weapon in their arsenal of, of their immune system. And the genetic sequence matches uh, the, a virus, the virus called the deformed wing virus, which affects bees and is one of the reasons for this, these colony collapses that we've seen. Not so much in Australia yet, touch wood, but it has affected them in other parts of the world, particularly America. So there's a virus and there's also a mite, the varroa mite, which has proved very damaging. And this actually uh, helps the bees to fight off both of them. So if we can get it to work, it could, could potentially be quite easy to 
roll out and you basically spray it into the hive, you know, sugary the solution, the bees will, will eat it, pick it up and potentially it could live in their, in their bellies and give them an extra weapon and hopefully prevent some colonies from collapsing. And you've been tweeting some pictures this morning of some some pretty big beasts. Uh, this is some big dinosaur news. A huge bone from a Brachiosaurus has been pulled from the desert and unveiled in a museum in Utah. Uh, what's remarkable about this particular bone? Well, it's a fun story because of the size of the bone. That's one thing. It's from a Brachiosaurus, which is a, it's a whopper. pretty iconic 30-ton dino, but actually quite rare. This would only be about the 10th or 11th individual specimen of a Brachiosaurus that's been found. And also, it's, it's, this, it's an arm bone, right? So it's a humerus, but it's about two metres long. And because it's so big and heavy, and it was in a rugged, remote part of the Utah desert, they actually pulled it out using Clydesdale horses. So these pictures look a bit like a scene from a Western, but they're of quite profound paleontological importance. So it's a fascinating story and those pictures are well worth a look.